fortunately, it's not too easy to see. But the room on the right, the smoke is banking down. Um, you'll see steam coming off the furniture. You'll see it now, steam coming off the carpeting. Everything in that room is vaporizing. Uh, in about 20 seconds, you'll see that room just explodes. Even the air is on fire. The smoke is on fire. Everything in that room catches on fire. That's what we deal with in homes nowadays. Um, this room here, this is plastic, the carpeting. These tables are made of uh, compressed wood glued together with toxic glue. Um, the, everything in here. So you can see now at three minutes and 40 seconds, the modern room is completely burned over. Now if we can't get there in time, that's gonna spread out of that room into the adjoining room, into the attic. Once it gets into the attic, um, it's like having a lumber yard I above your head there. The, all the trusses or wood trusses are up there. There's, it's, it's just all wood. If it gets in the attic, you've lost a house. Uh, let's look back over to the other side, the legacy. This is still basically under control. I mean, in the old days, they didn't even have air packs. They would come crawling in here and everything was fine. Um, you know, they wouldn't have, now we have hoods on, Nomex hoods and things. In the old days, you would get inside until your ears started burning. Then you knew you weren't too far and you'd back out. Nowadays, with, the, with the, our protective clothing, we get in too far a lot of times because we can't feel the heat as much. Uh, even though you can still feel the heat through there, it's like an oven mitt. Um, when we practice out here in our burn camp, uh, the heat at the ceiling is like 1,500 degrees. The heat th at your head when you're crawling is 400 degrees. Um, now here's the legacy room. It's 29 minutes and it's just now um, starting to flash over. So that's the difference. That's what we're facing nowadays. Uh, we're not facing the old days where we can take our time and get there. We have to be within five minutes of every place in the district so we can get there uh, and put these fires out. Um, last year we responded to 135 fire calls, almost all of which no one ever heard of. They didn't make the news because we got there within minutes and controlled the fire to the room of origin. We must abide by national standards and M NFPA 1710. I just told you that, about 17 firefighters on scene. Uh, this is the reason we have the amount of firefighters we, we do on duty every day. We have to have enough people on these regular fires to show up, put the fire out, and we also, NFPA 1710 says you have to have enough personnel available to run subsequent calls. So we got it figured out mathematically, so we have just the amount of people here every day to make that happen. Um, and they gotta be here all times of the day because you can't schedule a structure fire. If you can schedule them to the day shift, it would be great. But they happen all the time, nighttime, daytime, you never know. Um, just this morning, we had a fire on Southern Pines Drive. First engine arrived in four and a half minutes, saved the home estimated to be worth $80,000 with damage of $25,000. If this fire had gone unchecked, it would have totally destroyed someone's home and all their possessions, and quite possibly the homes on either side as well. See, it's another thing that people don't think about. <coughs> Say, well, geez, why don't, I remember um, we had a county manager said, why don't we just let the homes burn down and pay for them afterwards, we'd save money. Well, from people who are uneducated and don't know, that sounds good, but the thing is, some, if someone's in the house, you gotta have someone save that person, number one. Number two, if you let that house burn, it's gonna burn your neighbor's house and his neighbor's house. We had a fire not too long ago on Upper Captiva. Um, they got a small fire department up there. Big, huge house, beautiful homes up there if anybody's ever been up there. House caught on fire, wind-driven fire. By the time they could get enough firefighters, of course it overwhelmed the little fire department that was out there right away. So I had a roundup firefighters from the area, put them on boats, sent them out there. We had our guys there, we had a bunch of people there. It burned that house to the ground, burned its neighbor's house to the ground and severely destroyed the neighbors next to his house before it was able to be uh, stopped. So that's why we're here. Um, let me read you from the, um, from the report. Uh, the report was from 7.42 this morning. Like I said, the first two engines arrived in four and a half minutes. Engine 24 was dispatched for a possible structure fire. On arrival, found a residence outside. She advised that her dryer was on fire. Nothing was shown from the outside. Engine 24 established Southern Pines Command and went into investigative mode. Engine 24's crew, <coughs> excuse me, pulled an attack line. Lieutenant Broad made entry. Fire was found upstairs. Smoke was banked down to the knee level upstairs. The attack line was brought upstairs for knockdown. Broad and Plosinski performed primary and secondary searches 
upstairs and downstairs. Primary and secondary search, you're looking for victims. Uh, nothing was found. Sanderson made fire attack and extinguished the fire. Engine 21's crew started positive pressure ventilation while upstairs windows were open. Once the house was vented, the origin of the fire was determined. There was a stacked washer and dryer upstairs. The fire was determined to have started from the dryer. It appeared to have been burning in the lint trap area first. That's the vent in the wall head. Uh, the vent in the wall had substantial lint buildup inside of it. The washer and dryer were disconnected and taken outside. Small homes were made to check for extension. It was got to check for extension because if you do that and the fire got into the wall or into the attic, it's not a good thing. <laughs> Access was also made to the attic, check for extension. No extension was found. Smoke damage was extensive upstairs. Very little water damage was incurred. That's because our guys are trained to do their jobs and to do it quickly and efficiently where you don't ruin the house with water. That can be just as bad as fire. Uh, salvage and overhaul was continued and all was cleared. A uh, salvage is, um, is when you salvage their property. A lot of times we'll put tarps over their furniture. We'll put it all in the middle, put tarps on it, take anything they have that's of value, take it outside maybe. Overhaul is when you see firefighters with the pike poles pulling ceilings and things, you're looking for hidden fire. So after any fire, you got to do overhaul and find out, make sure you got all the fire. Um, all right. The residents were double checked for injuries and the owner of the condo arrived and he was allowed access to view the damage. All units were cleared and properties left to the owner and renter. Uh, that was just a normal day for our guys and like I said, you won't see that on TV because they got there quickly, did their job as they always do and put the fire out. In fact, the, the crew back on that wall were mostly the guys that were there. So the guys did a great job. They didn't know they were gonna be heroes today. So. Well, that's all I have, and thank you. If anybody have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Assistant Chief DeWitt, do you have anything? I know that. Yeah, just uh, two or two things we talked about. Uh, Deputy Chief Giuliano spoke about the training we had. Hold on one second. We talked about the training we had here last month. I just wanted to bring it up to speed. We did have a uh, nationally renowned uh, author and um, instructor come in and teach us art of reading the smoke. And we also had a training class with uh, doctors out of Chicago come down and do some uh, pediatric trauma. That was all last month. And then uh, also last month we had three days in a row of the Florida Cancer Society come in and talk to us, every one of our on-duty firefighters attended it and talking about the um, the dangers of cancer, the dangers of um, going into these type fires that Deputy Chief Giuliano spoke about, and also how to try and mitigate some of those hazards, as in when you get back from a call, make sure you're washing your gear in a timely manner so that carcinogens aren't laying on your gear and you're taking it home with you or that you're basically wearing it every day until you wash it. So uh, they spoke on that. Uh, we had about 61 of our members of the 78 on-duty firefighters attend the person uh, attend the, uh, the three-day course. So, just wanted to bring you up to speed on some training going on here. Thank you. Local 3444. You're too easy. Commissioner's business. We'll start with Commissioner Casella. I'll just update you on the. Uh, I don't know if you want to talk about the uh, possible new slip. We're, we're still investigating an in-water slip for the uh, rescue boat, and it's ongoing. We've had some good possibilities. Uh, the new chief has been working very hard on it with me, and uh, we'll be coming up with some answers in the near future. Thank you. Commissioner Forbes? <coughs> I have nothing this evening. Commissioner Murphy? No, sir. Commissioner McCourt? I had a few questions, but they've been answered. Thank you. Okay. And I have nothing. Uh, public input this evening. Do I have, I have no cards up here, but does anybody have anything they'd like to come up and say? Then this meeting is adjourned. Thank you for coming.